Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, some of you may remember the Vega 64 here that I reviewed in November of 2019. Since then, I've been using it on a near daily basis and because of this, my last two months of PC gaming have been both enjoyable and frustrating. I don't often follow up on hardware once I've reviewed it, but I seem to recall saying the following at the end of the original video. I did take a massive risk and I don't really advise you do the same, but yeah, I'll have to update you over the coming weeks as to how long this card lasts. It might just fail tomorrow, but believe me, you'll know about it if it does. Well, everyone, the time has come. It's time for an update. So the card itself is the Gigabyte Windforce OC Edition. I purchased it second hand for £165 with the knowledge that it was displaying the occasional black screen though after cleaning it up this problem seemed to have disappeared and I was very impressed with how it cut through my demanding games collection at 4k. I did note that you would probably see just as decent results with an overclocked Vega 56 though especially at these higher resolutions. Initially I paired it with my Ryzen 5 3600 and 16GB of 3200MHz DDR4 as well as a Seasonic Focus Plus Gold 550W power supply which handled the power hungry Vega just fine for about 2 weeks. I started experiencing black screens in specific games such as Red Dead Redemption 2 whereby I noted that the temperature was well within a safe limit. My next thought was that the power supply was in fact too weak and over the past fortnight I had just been lucky that I hadn't had any issues. Well with that in mind I switched to another gold rated unit, this time an older but very capable Antec True Power 750 watt box and after a 20 minute gaming session the same thing occurred. I took to the forums. During my research into the Vegas issues I discovered that black screens can be caused by using two 8 pin connectors on the same cable instead of separate cables. I checked my setup and sure enough I had used one power cable to power the card. My bad. Not that it mattered much because I was still getting black screens after this. Finally I switched to a Be Quiet 850 watt PSU as well as testing new HDMI and DisplayPort cables just in case, both of which didn't help the situation. So I then thought that perhaps it was a driver issue, not only did I roll back to an earlier version but I also waited until AMD released their next adrenaline software as I have been experiencing issues with various AMD cards lately with some drivers causing problems like this. Despite the card's constant issues even with the newest drivers, the temperatures continued to remain stable which made it clear to me that overheating wasn't a problem. Sure the fans do get quite loud under load but the Gigabyte cooler does a good job of keeping temperatures in check. Even after hours of gameplay the card doesn't exceed 65 degrees. How do I know that? Well, I actually managed to play a game for a few hours without any issues at all over the weekend and that's part of why my Vega ownership has been so frustrating. Some days it will work absolutely fine. As was the case when I made my Witcher 2 PC Melter video. It was a flawless day for the Vega 64 then. While the card was running fine I decided to see if there were any BIOS updates available but there were not, we were on the latest version. After the next crash I followed a few guides regarding Wattman settings, AMD's tweaking tool to see if any adjustments there would stabilise things. After a little while the system black screened yet again. This was about two weeks ago and I've since used different graphics cards in my PC so I had to do another completely clean AMD driver install this morning to make this video. It's been about 6 hours since then and there have been no crashes and again I was able to enjoy the card as it was meant to be enjoyed but I know my happiness will soon enough turn to disappointment once again. It's clear that despite my card being sold as sort of faulty and continuing to exhibit odd behaviour to this day it wasn't the only one with issues. Many people still report problems with this power hungry GPU and don't get me wrong half of me really likes it still but it's probably the most temperamental graphics card I've ever owned. Now though it's off to its new home where its new owner may have more luck with it than I ever did. 
I thought I'd give you guys an update on this situation because I said in the original video, should we make any discoveries with the Vega 64 after apparently fixing it with a simple clean that I would update you and, well, consider yourself updated. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying all Vega 64s are unreliable or they overheat or shouldn't be used. I'm just giving you details of my personal experience with one. After all, I did buy a card that was described as temperamental in the first place. I just promise you guys that I would let you know if we had any further developments after I thought that I had fixed it. And well, it turns out that this, what seemed like a simple fix, wasn't to be. And with that, I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your suggestions as to what personal graphics card I should get next because I'd love to make a video about it. I'm thinking about going back to an aftermarket 5700, something like that, perhaps an RTX 2060, but the most upvoted comment will be the card that I buy, so that's probably going to lead to disaster. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.